Yeah, well, I found this place in some ways by accident, but I've been driving past it for 25 years and, and never actually parked the car and got out and, and actually went for a little walk. And here we are right in the middle of this pristine virgin rainforest that, that we have just a couple of minutes from the studio full of cicadas and cockatoos and all sorts of things. So, so it made me want to just start writing a little bit of poetry about it and doing lots of little sketches and, and taking lots of little photographs just for notes and, and just trying to get a feel for it. You know, try and get a bit more involved in it, become a bit more connected to it, I suppose, in some way. So I find it really inspiring. And it's, it's particularly as, yeah, I've been driving past it for a quarter of a century. Yeah, to me, it's not landscape in the terms of uh, classical landscape art where you go out and, and do a representation or an illustration of something. It can be very beautiful. Uh, we all love those, really. Even though we pretend they're not very fashionable, we still love them. And they can be very beautiful because somehow we connect with them. We, we can understand them. They're very transparent. We can actually feel something directly with them. It's not that sort of thing. It's about listening to all the noises of all these cicadas that are going off. Uh, and, and there's mosquitoes and, and leeches uh, and uh, people walking along occasionally. Uh, and so there's all that sound and there's the smell as well. So you're trying to, and that triggers off all sorts of ideas. Uh, and it's those ideas and those, those things, I think. So when I say psychological landscapes about, it sounds a bit fancy and, and maybe that's the wrong word for it, but it just means that there's a lot, a lot more layers and things. So I'm trying to capture them and not illustrate them. Yeah, of course, there's a huge Asturian tradition of, of going outdoors, um, you know, and it goes way back from the beginning. Fred Williams is one, I suppose, um, where, where he came back from London and, and told his friends he was going to start painting gum trees and they all laughed at him. How ridiculous, you know, that was not, you know, that was silly, and yet, what wonderful art. Um, you've got other ones like John Wosley, I suppose, coming over from the UK, who does these huge pieces that, where he goes out into the desert and, and interacts with, with the place in all sorts of different ways and relates it back to poetry and, and relates it back to, to music and, and has installations and things like that. So it can go in many different ways. Um, but that process of actually coming out as a, a non-Indigenous Australian and trying to get come to terms with them where you're living now and, and, and how you react to it and how you use it as an artist is a really exciting thing. Huh? The things I'm attracted to are the same things. It doesn't seem to change. It never seems to change. The things are the same. You know, the same rhythms, the same patterns, the same colours and tones, the same way of seeing the world. That doesn't seem to ever change. Yeah, I think you, know, you can't escape, um, you know, your background and the, you know, where, where you've come from and what your memories are as a child, I suppose. I spent 30 years in Scotland and I've nearly I've spent 25 years here in Australia, so it's almost even. But I think you bring your, your, your culture with you, I think. But you've got to take the risk. Uh, you've got to take the risk of uh, introducing elements that are uh, quite uncontrolled if you're going to get something that uh, has that element of surprise. So, so just in a few seconds, you can lay something like that down, and and now the and now the process of what to do with it, and and so that's sort of my current working how I work at the moment with trying to use rhythm. And yeah, so, so for, for this exhibition I thought, well, I'm going to try and use colour because I've always been scared of it. Because I never knew quite what to do with it. And uh, so I would use monotonal colours quite often, you know. So I would just keep them all black and white or, or blue or green. I'd just choose a colour. So this time I thought, no, I'm going to go crazy. And I went to the shops and got the colour. And I started just putting them on the canvas. And then, um, and that was amazing because it was all these new things started happening. And so now you were playing with all these different interactions because every time you put one colour on, it changes all the others. And, and it was, and um, so I've given myself permission to have a go at that. And, and it, it looks a bit wild sometimes to me, 
Um, but that's the fun of it. And I think it better reflects the nature of these sorts of places. In many ways, they're uncontrolled. It's nature in its, in its natural state where all the old tree, leaves and trees and everything just fall down. And there's all these animals and insects and everything all tangled up. And so I quite like that. Um, it's the pattern and the rhythm of that that I, I, I respond to. And so now it's a matter of playing with colour. There are times when I think it's nothing more than um, uh, yeah, just seeking approval. Um, and, and that's probably what most human beings are doing most of the time. And so to pretend it's, it, that's not there is a mistake. It gets easier when you get older. When you're younger, you can't see these things. But when you're older, you can, but it doesn't matter. So, so that's the fun. I just enjoy it. I, I think it's great. I mean, imagine getting a chance to do this. I remember my teacher saying to me in primary school, he said, what do you like doing the most? And I said, art. And that was the question was answered.